What is going on everyone and welcome to Cart 63. My name is Ben and we are in my truck today. I know <laughs> last week I gave a, uh, a little hint that hopefully this coming video was going to be uh, a really good one. I thought that the not you know not only me being in my my garage, you know, giving information to you guys, but I, I hope to do some things like this. So we are going on a road trip today. We're going to Syracuse, New York. This is basically about two hours away from my house. So I'm driving two hours, two and two hours from today to go to the New York State Indoor Racing Championship. This is a Coke syrup racetrack. So it is in the New York State Fairgrounds. Uh, I can't remember what building it's actually in, but they lay the track surface out, whatever it is. I, I, I think it's a, a 12th of a mile. It's not a 10th. I, I'm pretty sure I've raced on a 10th before and I've, I've been on this track before. I think it's a 12th. It's three or four second laps, but they lay this out on concrete. They take Coke syrup or other, you know, Carol syrup, something like that. They spray it down on the surface. It becomes extremely sticky and extremely fast. Three to four second laps winging around this place. There's uh, there's uh, wood, you know, outside berms, if you will, <laughs> to protect you from going through anything. Uh, and it is absolutely insane. It is, a, I won't say it's a good time. I've raced this twice. Once, way back in the day, uh, KT100, I did fairly well. I think I came in second. I got passed by one of the veterans with a couple laps to go. Um, definitely a young young man sport or a veteran sport who knows what they're doing with coke syrup racing. Um, and then the second time, I tried my open on it as 125, my sedan, and I had my wedge on. I didn't have proper setup. I didn't have proper tires, and I, I barely hung on, and I could have I could have died, guys. It was... <laughs> I think I held my breath the entire race. It was a bad time. I was, uh, according to my wife, I was I was pasty white after I came off the track. So um, what we want to do is we want to go and just show some of you what this is like. Many of you are, you know, dirt racers, and that's, that's what I am. But during the winter, when you're in this type of climate that I'm in, I'm in New York, and you know that, um, we go outdoor race because we can't. The the weather, the snow, the cold, it's just an, an impossibility for us. So what do we do occasionally? We go indoor racing, we go concrete racing to where is, you're not freezing your tuchus off every time. And I think there's another race that's, uh, that happened last year that was an indoor dirt race. I didn't catch much of it, but that does exist in New York. Maybe I can, uh, maybe I can get to that. I don't know if it happens this year or not. But I figured going through, showing you, you know, maybe some behind the scenes, you know, maybe I, I got some friends there. Maybe I can get some uh, footage of the carts, of what tires they're kind of running. Uh, definitely some racing action. Show you what that's all about. This, you know. I knew this race was coming up and I was just like, you know, aside from me wanting to go to, you know, go and see some of my friends, to go and break up the winter and see some of the, the racing action, I thought this would make wonderful content for you guys. Some of you have never seen indoor racing. Uh, some of you maybe have, have contemplated, you know, going indoor racing. You have heard of it and you're just, you're wondering where and, you know, what's this all about? What can I expect? I thought, I don't rarely get to go to this race and today I get to go so just bonus it's a bonus that I get to record this offer this to you guys and uh yeah we're gonna I'm gonna do some montage stuff probably me driving along you know how I like to do that put a little music behind you know, soothe the music show you the uh New York State um dreary landscape today uh, we have cloud cover no leaves it is December not exactly pleasant looking here in New York but uh, I'm going to do it regardless. So, okay, uh, I will see you when we get to the track and uh, hopefully get you some really good footage. All right, see you in a second. Real quick here, I just wanted to add in, uh, I have the flyer for this race that I have uh, downloaded off of the, the Facebooks there. <laughs> and uh, just in case you guys are interested, you know, it's not the same date next year, but it is usually put on by the same people Richard Murtaugh Racing, uh, FX Cabrera. It's an auto dealership up in this uh, in, in Western New York here. 
their sponsor of the event. And I thought that I'd put this out. It'll show the classes. It'll show you, you know, uh, what time gates are, this and that. It's usually the same. It's not the same date, but it's usually the same layout per year. So uh, hopefully I'm talking here and I am going to that that thing so you can read it for your for your own information so i just thought i'd throw that in real quick and uh all right back back to your regular scheduled program All right, everyone, uh, I was just getting up to the door. There was quite a line as I got to Syracuse. I uh, got paid, and now we're just taking a walk through here real quick. This is the uh, calm before the storm. That's what I posted on my Facebook page anyway, at least what I said. And, you know, people are starting to load in. They're starting to get their, their pits uh, filled up. I don't know how busy it was on Friday, but this is the remnants of that. So everybody was in here. They had raced and uh, preparing for Saturday, I assume. Just taking a nice stroll up here. Obviously, this is where spectators are going to be. I want to keep them separated from the racing action. And then peek over here. And we're going to take a look at the track. And I believe I start talking here on camera as I'm walking towards the track. So I'm gonna cut out of this voiceover and let me do my thing there. Well, I could be wrong. This seems a lot bigger to me than in years past. It really does. You know, as you can see uh, here, as they spread the Coke syrup on, see it's sprayed all over the place. And here, as the carts get into the turn, starts to lay it up or down. Yeah, this, this track looks a lot bigger than years past. I mean, maybe because I've missed so many uh, years coming to this thing, I did not notice, but here's your, uh, here's your wall. Okay, as you could hear there, my <laughs> feet were sticking to the uh, floor. The Coke syrup was that, that sticky. This is most definitely bigger than when I raced it. Uh, I dare say that the track was half this size when I raced it. This has to be, if I had to guess, somewhere around an eighth of a mile now. Uh, it, it really is. These straightaways are pretty darn long considering that it's in the building. Uh which I, I guess, you know, be great for competitors because the one thing about the old track was that it was just, it was like a, just a big circle and you were in it the entire time. 
and at least you get a little breather on the straightaway before you get into these turns and the amount of g's is exceptional on a coke syrup track so uh, i just thought i'd take you guys around this uh get a little kind of up close what you're looking at it i had somebody comment on uh facebook that, that you know oh the track looks slick and it is anything but slick you uh you touch the steering wheel and the, the cart just jerks from side to side you have to be very smooth very precise you have to scale your cart uh you know specifically for this track so uh quite amazing stuff pretty awesome your feet as i was walking there my feet are sticking to the floor and then here's your your enter and exit so you come off and then you come down this lane and you'll get scaled as you come off Uh, tech. Calm before the storm. After the driver's meeting, I 
really wasn't paying attention, sorry. <laughs> but uh, I came over and Adrenaline Rush Racing was there and they had some uh, slack chassis. I almost said Phantom. Uh, slack is out of Buffalo, New York, uh, PMI. Performance Machining Incorporated, something like that. Uh, anyway, they make really quality items. Uh, really nice chassis, as you can see here. Very well designed. Uh, at one point in time, I raced an Axiom. And uh, a really good chassis, just took a little getting used to. One thing I didn't really point out is notice the left rear here. Uh, it was just real brief there. <laughs> Sorry about that. I meant to make a bigger point out of that. But uh, these are friends of mine from uh, Dansville and uh, Paradise Speedway that I know. There's Sid and Mike. Uh, just the pit set up, uh, you know, uh, pretty good, pretty good friends from the track come over. Scales, there are scales set up all over the place throughout this venue. Uh, just to, to get your scaling right, to get your percentages right, you got people working tires, you got people working on brakes. Uh, there's Chad Weatherby and his son. Wanted to show this really quick. This is a dual-ended tire surfacer, so it's a full axle. It is chain-driven off the motor. Uh, I thought that was a really cool concept. Maybe somebody wants to build one like that. And pretty much after, well, pretty much, <laughs> always after, uh, after a trip to the track on Coke syrup, your tires are gonna build up with some gunk and stuff. Now, uh, I've seen this done multiple ways. This is one of the ways to get the, uh, basically the base layer of Coke syrup and all the garbage that your tires pick up because of the Coke syrup off your tires. Uh, it's a heat gun with a scraper attached to it. So uh, Jay is scraping off tires. And then we're gonna move into some uh, grinding of tires. And this was happening all around me, like I said, in between each session uh, of going out on track. You're gonna wanna clean your tires off best you can. We have all sorts of scrapers and sprays of sorts to, uh, to clean off. I, I didn't bother to ask what was in the spray, but uh, then you get nice, fresh, clean tires. Tires are put on racks, they're marked, um, and, you know, for different uh, staggers and what have you. Everywhere you look, tires, 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 tires. Setup is great, but tires are the name of the game, just like dirt. They, they are imperative. Here we go. We got a little more, uh, more action here. This is Jay Groves, uh, owner of Cartworks, my Phantom dealer, where I got my... Uh, 2022 Scythe. Uh, Jay's super dude, and uh, he he says year after year he swears that he's only doing his own tires. But then uh, people get a hold of him, and he had been doing tires all morning uh, uh, Friday for customers there, and he knows what he's looking for. So he's uh, whatever grit sandpaper he's got on his uh, his buffer slash grinder there. Uh, he's got an assistant spraying every layer. He follows through. That's another layer. Here's some of the tools of the trade. I was just kind of peeking around and taking a look at... Uh, I always consider going to this race again, but uh, I realize how much is involved in doing it, and I'm not sure I really want any part of that. So uh, there you go. In between. All right, everyone, uh, we have the heats here. Now, I will say in this video, I did not stay for the features. Uh, I had family obligations uh, in the evening, and I, I wanted to get out of there and actually, you know, get back while it was still light out. <laughs> so I did not stay for the features, but I did get most of the, the heat races on camera here. Not the full... Uh, not the full races, it just it ended up being a lot, a lot of footage. I ended up taking somewhere in the neighborhood of an hour and 20 minutes worth of footage and I had to consolidate it into, you know, a sub half an hour. You know, I didn't want to lose too many of you guys, you know, to, to boredom of me talking about this stuff. So um, there's uh, it's something new that I, I hadn't seen in years, these quarter midgets. Uh, they seem to be, uh, 
there in force, if you want to use that terminology. But it was the first time I had seen them, and uh, at least indoor. And I thought, well, that's wonderful. You know, just a bunch of young kids that being, you know, they got good protection around them. Um, but uh, this was, oh, yeah, wicked wreck from uh, Matt Chavez. Um, he, he was fine. He got up. Uh, saw him a little bit later. He had an ice pack on his shoulder. Really bummed about his performance there. But this was the thing that was not funny, but funny. Um, the immediate restart, uh, that tire bit. The new leader coming into that corner. Uh, those tires are unforgiving. Uh, make you hop. And that's that. And they finally got a good start in the Predator class. <laughs> it was, uh, it was it, like I said, it was uh, unfortunate, but uh, it, it's something that tire you can't, you cannot hit it, uh, especially with no nose on the cart. You, you do not get anywhere near those tires or else they will bite you. while I'm at it, uh, doing voiceover stuff. I wanted to address something. Uh, we took a very, very brief look at the left rear on one of the carts. Uh, I, I'm sorry that I, I should have addressed this more uh, closely, you know, when I was looking over a cart or whatever. These carts run a left front as their left rear. So, you know, just in general, a indoor cart on Coke syrup yeah, they have a tire rule. This this happened to be a burst tire uh, tire rule here, but they are going to run a left front as their left rear. So both sides are going to be uh, what are they 550? Those those are going to be the 550s, and then the outsides are the 810s. So you got huge right sides, smaller left sides. I I think they're somewhere in the neighborhood of an inch and a half to two inches rear stagger. Uh, somebody who's race that races this could correct me if I'm wrong. You know maybe. Maybe it's more than that. I'm not quite sure. But uh, higher left side, you see a lot of carts with a lot, you know, either a weighted uh, left side Nerf bar or a bunch of weight strapped to their seat or to the, the Nerf bar in order to increase that. You, you want <laughs> the biggest thing is getting these things to turn. You do not want a high side. You do not want too much weight on the right side. You will start hopping. It will cause all sorts of issues. You're going to get tired. You need that left side weight in order to get these things to go around the turn, and you need that stagger as well. So just a, a couple differences between those and your dirt cart. that I would probably run if I were to run indoor again. Uh, this is the open class. Now this is open four stroke. Um, and I obviously am a two stroke uh, person. So I, whether or not they would allow me to bring, I, I think, you know, these are open block cylinders. These, they do have uh, a good amount of power to them. As you can see, they're, they're awfully twitchy. They're getting loose coming off the corner, you know, blowing the tires loose. But I dare say that I would be willing to run my uh, my KT against these guys and see what I could do. I would be a little underpowered compared to what they have, but uh, I think that they might be a little overpowered for the actual track surface. So uh, just an opinion of mine, but this is the open class, so you know I, I got to have the, the love for the open guys.
am back in town. Uh, <laughs> I cut it a little short just because uh, I am doing family stuff this evening and I didn't want to drive in the dark or anything like that. So I got back into town and it was quite the experience again. One thing I am going to say is that the track, I didn't know they, they made the track bigger. Uh, that was one thing that threw me off a little bit. Uh, there a fewer, you know, a fewer people there than what I was used to. I guess there were some New Hampshire people that were supposed to be there, but they got some kind of storm, so they didn't make the trip down. But uh, all in all, a really good time. Um, I hope I, I got a ton of footage, <laughs> and I hope this uh, this video served you guys well. Uh, and if you had any questions about indoor co uh, Coke syrup raising, I think I'm going to do another video kind of... Uh, discussing what changes one might do to a cart in order to make it, you know, what you're going to run indoors, you know, because there's definitely a difference there. Uh, oh, there's an ambulance going by. That's no good. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm almost home here, so I thought I'd jump on real quick. Just get a little bit of, uh, is this guy going to go? Uh, get a little bit more footage of me driving the truck uh, from my excursion today and uh, just say if you didn't mind hitting a like on the video if you enjoyed this type of thing uh, maybe subscribe to the channel because I have to say that in every single video I met a gentleman at the indoor races he says you know sometimes you're a little get goofy I am well aware dude <laughs> I am well aware but uh, just part of who I am anybody who knows me knows that I don't change much from video on to uh, into real life. I, I am I am who I am kind of thing. So, all right, guys, I really appreciate you stopping by, and uh, see you next week. Later.